And when I was a junior in college, I was, I only have 120 games left if I'm lucky. So every mm. single game I was really cherishing, cherishing every single moment. I was that person that was taking pictures all the time and everything. And I'm a very sentimental person. And I remember my senior year, we had a few games get canceled due to snow. And I remember being so upset because I was, it's my senior year. <laughs> and I didn't want it. I didn't want to the games to be canceled. And man, I didn't know I was gonna cry, but yeah, the, the games being canceled is just, now I was no, I can still play. You know, everyone had to, everyone had to go home. So yeah, whatever's on your schedule, you never know it's gonna be rained out or snow, snowed out or anything. Hello and welcome to Catching You, a dad and daughter softball journey. I'm Rusty, a dad who's been in the dugout and on the sidelines. And I'm Lacey, the daughter whose journey through softball has been filled with incredible wins, tough losses, and so many lessons both on and off the field. For the past 16 years, we've navigated the highs and lows of softball together, from the local fields to national tournaments and everything in between. From the challenges of recruitment during COVID to the mental and emotional roller coaster that comes with being a student athlete, we'll be sharing the perspectives of both the parent and athlete and firsthand experience of the impact of sports on mental health and the importance of support from the sidelines. Hey, well, welcome back, everybody, to Catching You. Uh, I'm your co-host, Rusty Ham. With me is my other co-host, Lacey Ham. Hi. Hi. Um, today we have a guest. Uh, her name is Emily Watson. She played for Tulsa from 2015, 2018. 2018, after her senior season, she got drafted in the National professional fast pitch so that's awesome uh she also started a podcast in 2022 uh it was originally once an athlete and then she's changed it to rose metal we're going to get into that as well and then she also does private lessons she's a private lessons coach uh and the name of that is becoming that pitch so welcome emily thanks for joining us thank you thank you so much for having me here yeah you're welcome hey just so just for, for the audience, just tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, growing up, where'd you grow up, you know, rec ball, travel ball, you know, where, yeah. just yeah. kind of describe the, the early beginnings of, of Emily and her sophomore career. Yeah, I listened to your guys' first episode and it sounds a lot like how I started. Um, so I started when I was four years old playing t-ball and rec ball in Chico, California, and um, I just loved the game. I, you know, tried to do soccer and dance and whatever. And, you know, I was just like, nope, I love softball. So um, <laughs> stuck with softball, started to play um, competitively when I was probably about nine and everyone else was pitching. And I was like, nope, I'm not going to do it. That's way too close to the batter. I'm scared of getting hit. <laughs> um, and I, you know, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to do it. And um so I started to pitch when I was about nine, nine or 10. And then uh, fun fact, when I was 10, I like broke my pinky toe. So um, that made it kind of hard to pitch. And now at 27 years old, I broke my first like official bone um, jump rope. Yeah. yeah. Jump rope. Anyway, um, so I, I played rec and travel when I was nine through 13 in, in Chico. So on my 13th birthday went to Oklahoma played school ball and travel ball and you know played all the way until I graduated high school went to Tulsa I was all American there and then you know got drafted to play professionally played a season went to Oregon was a grad assistant for the Oregon Ducks or technically was a grad manager since I didn't go there for undergrad um, was right. there for 2019 to 2021 and um, loved it there but I decided I really like to work with kids one-on-one -on -one or just right. pitchers one-on-one -on -one. and uh went to san diego and uh lived there hung out for a couple of years and now i'm back in oklahoma near my family doing lessons um doing becoming that pitch doing rose metal um that's kind of the um overall like general thing yeah. and gosh i don't mean to like sound so insensitive saying like i didn't want to get hit so i need to like talk about the <laughs> um <laughs> but, um, I listened to your podcast, of course, and you talked about like feeling like you you thought everyone thought was lame. You were lame for wearing a mask. Yeah, yeah, it's all in your yeah. head. Like no one, literally, no one cares. Like I like 
it's all about what you think about. So I wore a mask all the way like from like 11 years old until I would still to today if I was playing. Um, and then I, um, I wore a mouse guard for a bit. Oh, wow. Because there's just no, there's no telling like if you're going to get hit or not, like whether you hit, hit your spot, like that hitter could be still good enough to hit you. Right. Uh, yeah. but I, I wanted to ask you, like, it was kind of unclear what age you were when that happened. I was 14. I was 14. But uh, the mask thing is mostly because I was, I looked up to the older girls a lot on, in the organization mm-hmm. and none of them, none of them wore masks. So I thought they were like cool because of it. So uh, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to be cool, not wear a mask. And then. There's like the other team, the other girls definitely were wearing masks at that time. And I'm like, oh, they're not cool, blah, blah, blah. But it is cool to wear one now, for yeah. sure. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Because there's just, it is, I feel like you, you're lucky to like never get hit. Like you said, like I've been hit in the shins just like you. Like I've been hit everywhere. And gosh, it just being hit in the head or the face, like I've seen it happen. It's, it's going to happen. And yeah. man, I'm so sorry that it happened to you. Yeah. It, oh, I mean, even if she was wearing a mask, it would, it wouldn't Still have saved would have happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, um, yeah. Because one of my teammates like turned like that and it hit the back of her head. Was that what happened with you? Yeah. 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 Crazy stuff. So, uh, so Emily, go back to, to, to Rag. What was your favorite team name? You know, oh, the, uh, her, the very first was, team. Yeah. What the was your favorite? Was first... on. Yeah. Um, it was the the Little Mermaids. The Little Mermaid. <laughs> That's great. And I would really you... love that. Yeah. I would have loved that name, honestly. Did, yeah, and did and you have was... nicknames too? Did you have nicknames too back then? You know, I don't remember if I had I think I was like sharky for a bit because I was always known to be like in the pool whenever I'm not pitching. Like I was just oh, always like swimming outside and stuff, but um no not very many nicknames i do know that there was like a fall team that i was on a fall rec team that like it wasn't as serious so i was i was allowed to like choose the name of the team and i went with like pretty pink princesses or something i don't know <laughs> i should have just done little mermaids too that was way That's right way yeah lace, lace what was your favorite one again um i would say probably like Cotton Candy Crushers. The Cotton Candy Crushers. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Her mom was the head coach, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's let's talk about your podcast, Emily. Um, again, it was once an athlete, and then you changed it to Rose Medal. So the, 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 I, I, there's probably a little story behind that. So can you describe why why the change and what Rose Medal means? Yeah. So I started once an athlete. Um, by like that was the domain that was available out of the names that I was coming up with to talk about life after sports. Um, and so I was doing podcast interviews, talking to athletes that I was talking to mostly retired athletes, but um, some current and talking about like what they expect life after sports to be type of thing. And I had, you know, someone on the show that is a little bit more popular and I'm, I don't know if it was the, this person saw the reel or the TikTok that I made of that person, but it happened right after I had that person on the show where someone stole my name and was messaging me, telling me that they, uh, that they like own that now and they trademarked it. And, oh, wow. um, I was like, I talked to some lawyers about it and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to make it a little bit more personable, um, yeah. to me because Rose is my middle name. Okay. and metal like you want a metal so yeah. um yeah i just i just made the change because i was like i don't even want to deal with trademark issues down the line down the line because if it's happening already like 12 episodes in then it's probably going to happen again later so right i just kind of let them have it so i was like whatever i'm just gonna do rose metal and i'm i'm kind of glad because now it's a non-profit it's a 501c3 nonprofit. so one day i hope to it's a podcast because I'm trying to raise awareness for the cause. So the mission is to provide resources and support to current and former athletes. So the goal is to one day be able to give out scholarships to athletes to, um, you know, go back to school. If their life was all being, being an athlete, then they probably chose a major that your school, like your sport allowed, you know what I mean? 
or yeah. if you might have chosen a major that um, after you graduate undergrad, you have to go back to school for something else or go to law school and, um, you know, your sport doesn't pay for it anymore. So oh, that's, that's great. Yeah, so, yeah. At the end, we'll we'll, uh, we'll see, uh, you know, how people can donate and all that kind of stuff. You know, Laces, she's a junior, so she's kind of like she I think she fits your profile. I don't know, she's going to be a senior, right, Lace? I don't know if you want to. Yeah, I'm. Currently a junior, I've applied to a few internships for the summer. I really haven't heard back from a few of them, um, but I am like approaching my senior year and it is kind of scary um, for kind of not knowing what's going to happen afterwards. And if like some people have jobs lined up, some people don't, some people go back, live back home to save up money. Um, and there's all these th- those all these factors that like go into not being an athlete anymore and um but i just i'm majoring in psychology and minoring in kinesiology so i do want to stay in like the sports realm um just anywhere in sports um i'm really interested in sports psychology so you definitely have to go back to school for that um but yeah there's all these different things that i want to do but i haven't really narrowed it down quite yet yeah and that internship between junior and senior year is super important So my best advice for, you know, college students, especially in your position, is to talk to your professor, professors, um, network with the people at your school, because that's where you're going to get your connections. It's all about like who you know. Right. So um, I would just keep your eyes open for who knows what and just like express to them, like, I'm looking for an internship. Do you think anyone, you know, anyone that would have an opening or um, what do you know about this place and like stuff like that? Just talk to your professors is my best advice. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, again, uh, you know, our, our podcast is about a daughter and, and, and a father's journey in softball. Um, and I, you know, I, I set out a couple of questions before this episode and you said that, you know, your idol or somebody you looked up to was your dad and, and, and he caught you. I mean, you put in there that he caught you for years. So can you, uh, I mean, cause that's that was kind of why we're doing this right that's why the podcast is called catching you yeah um i you know i don't know if maybe you heard my my story a little bit but i didn't treat Lacey very well when she first started i was not a very good father i mean I, i'm a father a good father outside of softball but when we were doing pitching lessons i was not a good father um i was throwing it back hard to her i was rolling it back to her i was moping and body language is bad so describe your kind of relationship with your dad and how he uh, helped you out with that yeah, so I would put both my parents, but I feel like, you know, due to the context of this conversation, I'll put my dad. Yeah. Um, both my parents were um, athletes. My mom was a college athlete um, in track and my dad played baseball and football. And um, so, yeah, when I started to play t-ball, he got real excited that I was interested in, you know, the female version of his sport. Right. And he loves baseball. Um yeah. And so, yeah, when I started pitching, he was catching me on the bucket and um, I could throw hard, but I was not accurate at all. So, you know, it would just be like. Am I allowed to cuss on this? <laughs> of course. OK. Yeah. He would just be like, God damn it, Emily, like throw a straw. <laughs> I'll make the, the bucket and just break the bucket. And he like you know, throw the bucket, but obviously the bucket can't go far. So like, it's like, I can see his frustration. Um, but yeah, I, I had to find other ways to throw. I had to find other people to catch. So, um, yeah, it was frustrating, you know, the first couple of years. And, um, I remember like I would get down on myself and, and stuff like that. And I, I don't remember this happening, but my mom said that there was a time where I struck out and my dad got really mad at me. And um, ever since then, and I was like 10 years old, 10, 11, ever since then, he's been chill. So, um, you know, he was the guy and I'm going to put my dad on blast. Well, he was the guy at my games with the margarita because he's like, you know what? I'm just going to sit back, relax and watch the game. And um, anytime I felt down after the games, he was like my biggest supporter. He would be like, why are you saying that? Like, you know what to do. Like, don't be down on yourself. I'm going to be upset if you stay down on yourself. So nice. he was, I, I got really lucky with very supportive parents um, and 
good attitudes. And I, I, yeah, I just feel really lucky with that. Yeah. Um, well, any advice to like people like, you know, for, for those dads out there, right? Cause part of this is, you know, some of the dads are listening to this and some of the, you know, players are listening to it. Any yeah. advice to like maybe some of the girls that have a dad that's just like over the top, you know, like, cause you're doing pitching lessons, yeah. right? You're, you're in private pitching. I'm sure, I'm sure you have some bucket dads that are just like kind of yeah. the same, right? With bad attitudes or body yeah. language. So. Yeah. I have a dad that texted me the other day that was like, man, like this is, this kind of makes me want to stop. And I was like, no, like if you, cause he's coaching her, he is the team coach. And I was like, it, you need to look out for yourself too. So if you are not feeling it, like if you feel like it makes you want to quit and it's also making her frustrated and it just turns into like it not being fun anymore, like both of you, like if you both are, are feeling that way, like maybe you should take a step back. And he was like, well, I made a commitment for the year. And I was like, yes, you know, finish out your commitment and then right. reconsider being the team coach. If you don't have to be the team coach, take that step back because it can be really frustrating and it can turn into just butting heads the whole time. Just like I said, like my dad was my coach when I was 10 on the pretty pink princesses team. That was the last time he was my coach. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, Lace, you've seen it, right? You've seen a lot of girls uh, just fall out of love and softball and, and there's various reasons why, but you know, a lot yeah. of it has to do with, you know, parents and putting too much pressure on them. Right. Yeah. Cause I, I recently started coaching I think my sophomore year, so last year, um, and doing some lessons with girls. And like, I've had some experiences where I had to like calm down the situation. And it, and it's a very public, like I worked for uh, a company, so there's multiple lessons going on at a time. And I mean, you can s just feel the tension throughout the whole entire room and like they just, just have to calm it down. And I can see the girl getting really frustrated and really down on herself. And I just really, I really feel for those girls because um, I'm personally very hard on myself as it is. And that's never changed since I was like nine years old. And so just, um, I wanted to ask like, when, when you get like, when you were little or when you're going through college and you got down on yourself and um, I mean, it's sounding like you're pretty hard on yourself as well. Um, like how you got through. I mean, through. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, got through those moments because I'm, I, mean, I still have those moments where I, I'm like going crazy. Yes. Um, good question. Um, I don't remember how I like, I'm sure it was my parents that helped me calm down when I was younger. Um, but as for college, still my parents, um, and I would just think about, okay, I just need to move on and figure out what I need to do next because I don't want this to happen again. Uh, so for example, there was a time where we played against Wichita State and I, I pitched and we got absolutely obliterated. And I was like, I remember after the game, I, I went to my dad and I was like, maybe I should just stop pitching. Like that is, that was bad, bad. And he was like, no, you know what to do. Like, he was like, just no, don't say that again. Just know, like, you won't let it happen again. I was like, you right. And I just went home and worked and I, I talked to the coach and I said, what can I do to be better? What can I do to make sure that never happens again? He told me exactly what to do. I did it. And ever since then, we beat them when I was pitching. So, nice. yeah, I, it's just like hard moments are really hard in the moment, but you got to let it go. Like, yes, it's OK to feel upset in the moment, but then you got to figure out, OK, why am I feeling upset? OK, they scored 13 runs. OK, next time I won't let them score 13 runs. <laughs> Does that sound familiar, Lacey? Oh, yeah. Awfully, awfully, awfully familiar. familiar. So Friday, yeah. Uh, yeah, Emily Friday didn't go well. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then uh, I mean, it was go it was going well. It was it going just, well, and then the wheels and that a little bit, fell. yeah. And then, you, but you came back Saturday, right? You made adjustments and you you kicked butt on Saturday, so that, that was good. Um, so yeah, I wanted to do some. I know you did some X earlier on TikTok today. Um, but that was more for players. I want to, what, what are your dad X? Like what, 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 what X would you have that, you know, regarding dads? Oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Is that, a um, I guess like, 
I guess it would be like when I'm in the middle of a lesson and the dad is like, come on, let's go. And I'm like, hey, wh- whoa, whoa. You know, um, let's go as in like you know, hit your spots in, and stuff like that. As in, yeah, as in they're putting pressure on them to perform in the lesson when it is a lesson, it is practice. We're not in a game. Uh, so yeah, that, that kind of gives me the ick when a dad puts pressure on their kid during a lesson when they're clearly trying, uh, when they're clearly, I'm telling them to push outside of their comfort zone. They're supposed to mess up. Uh, and a dad is like, come on, do better. And I'm like, no, like we're doing fine. So, so I, maybe, I we, maybe we should have them do burpees if they do something like that. <laughs> you know, I did have a dad one time that, so this is my, you know, overall ick just in life. But, um, really especially when it comes to players is when someone over apologizes and i did have a dad that said sorry every time he spoke and i saw his daughter doing the same thing and so i got onto her and she was like but my dad's doing it too and i was like almost making them both doing it because i was like i'm about to make you both do burpees because you're both so (laughs) over apologetic like stop apologizing you're here to learn okay both of you down and give me 10 yeah that's funny uh yeah cool uh so um you're doing private lessons called becoming that pitch so how did you come up with that name that that interests me too is it yeah is the um, name yeah so uh about a year and a half ago i started my weight loss journey and i um i was trying to think of like a journal name that i would come up with if i wanted to do like a fitness journal and I don't know, I kind of never really went through with that. But then I started thinking of like along the same lines of what I wanted to do for pitching. And I don't know, I just kind of came up with becoming that pitch. Like, I, I want to be that pitch. Like, uh, so <laughs> um, it's supposed to be funny. It's supposed to run with that bitch. And um, I made it the journal name. There you go. And so I put it on Amazon um, and then. I just kind of went off of that for everything else. I, 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 after that, I created a website for online training and I was like, I'll just go off of what I made my journal becoming that pitch.com. And then it kind of turned into more than that. I started making customized rosin bags. I started to, um, sell some merchandise and stuff. And so now it's a whole brand of becoming that pitch. It just kind of started with, um, the journal name that I just randomly came up with one day. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Um, so M, uh, I don't call you M. Like my wife's name is Emily too, so I call <laughs> M. So I didn't mean to call you the M. Well, you're good. Uh, um, so Lace, what did, what did you start today? And, and this kind of relates to uh, some of your podcasts, Emily. Yeah, I actually started the 75 hard today. Oh, um, that's good. Yeah, with some friends. So I think I'm I'm really glad that I get to do it like, I'm doing it with my roommate and then two of my closest friends, but even one of mine's, one of them's a teammate. So, I mean, it is kind of hard being a student athlete and going on the road and not really choosing like where we go to eat or like when we get to eat or workouts, workout times. So, um, just try, I'm just starting. So I'm going to figure out a routine, but, um, I really just wanted to do that for myself. And I mean, my parents definitely inspire me because this is what, like their third time doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I just, and they gave me the book and all that stuff. So nice. Yeah. I started on Friday and um, I didn't realize, I just kind of went for it. I was like, you know what? Just start. So I started on Friday and then I forgot and I had like plans to go watch everyone play on Saturday. So I jumped around a bunch of tournaments from 8 to 10, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. And I woke up. Luckily, my cat woke me up too early because uh, I was like, what am I going to do? Oh, I got to do workout number one. And That's so right. <laughs> I did workout number one. I chugged half a gallon of water um, before like 9 or 10 a.m. And uh somehow squeezed in a second workout in between games i yeah the time management is the hardest part yeah because you did it last year right because you did three episodes on it i I only listened to the first episode i know you you were going to talk about like the how the challenges of water and um all that kind of stuff but uh yeah yeah, 
talk about the challenges, you know, because you weren't necessarily playing last year, but you were, you know, coaching and stuff. So what were those challenges during the 75 part that you had? Yeah. Yeah. I went really in depth in those on the, on the podcast, but yeah. yeah, I would say the biggest thing is the time management. And then, um, yeah, the, the two workouts being, I actually made them, you know, a couple hours apart. You don't have to do that, but, um, yeah. And then there's all those aspects, the water, just having to go to the bathroom all the time is quite different. Um, and the reading, um, almost forgot to do that a couple of times, but yeah, it's, it's a really good program to just kick your ass in the gear, you know, like just get a good, like, uh, discipline in. And it's not all about like, you know, physical health and stuff, but that is kind of what kickstarted me to think of Rose Metal, to think of um, becoming that pitch. Like it, it made me more like creative too. So I really liked the mental side of it the most. So the, hypothetically, Lacey's done with college. She's done with softball. Like what are some of the, I don't know, Lacey, you want to talk about, you know, being a senior and knowing that, you know, this could be the end, you know, you've been playing since you're five years old. I don't know, Lacey, I don't know if you want to touch on that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, um, I definitely started talking about it with our sports psychologists on campus um, about, like, my biggest thing is that I worked all, like, so hard for the past, I don't know how long I played travel, well, I forgot. But all that traveled to work until I got to college and we get four years of college and that's pretty much it. And then I'm, I'm very like, I have a bad game and I'm like, oh, I'm letting like my little self down because I only have this much left of softball and I work so hard to get to where I am today. And, um, but he, he definitely makes it clear that softball is just like a chapter in your life and not your whole, your whole life. Um, so it is sad that that chapter is like slowly coming to an end, but like, I have to learn to enjoy it, but I'm definitely struggling, struggling with like the identity part of it and what's going to happen afterwards. Um, like life wise, job wise, friendships, relationships, all of that stuff. So, um, just balancing, trying to think of, um, positive outlook. For sure. There's so much positive to it. It's just, uh, it's also a sad moment. I don't know if you guys saw like an hour ago, Jason Kelsey just retired yeah. and he was crying the whole time. And I was almost in tears also. I was trying not to cry because I don't want to look all puppy for this interview. Um, but I was like, man, like I get where he's coming from. Of course, it's a huge difference like we're not nfl level jason kelsey level but i totally get like why he's so upset because it is his whole life you do that is like every single day that's what you do is your sport and it's your people and it's your routine and it's what you work so hard to do and then like you're only allowed to do it until your body or tells you that you can't or um or society AKA us softball doesn't have much for, um, for after, um, after college, but there is, there is some, it's just not the same as NFL. Right. So yeah. Um, when I was, you know, a junior senior year of my college, it was every single game, every single game I cherished. And I was like, I'm just counting down I'm like, I'm, I know how many games, not counting down, but like, I know how many games there are left. So when I was in like 14 and under, I remember after a game and I don't remember much from this era of my life because I was one of the younger 14 unders. I remember after a game, the coach said, if you guys continue to play through the rest of high school, you only have about probably like a hundred games left. Mm. And you got to play each game like it's going to be your last because you never know when you're going to get injured and you can't play anymore or something happens. And if you are lucky, you'll make it to 100. And if you play in college, you'll get an extra, you know, 150, whatever it is. And there's a, there's still a number to the games. Right. So ever since he said that, 
I've kept it in my mind. And when I was a junior in college, I was like, I only have 120 games left if I'm lucky. So every mm -hmm. single game I was like really cherishing, cherishing every single moment. I was that person that was taking pictures all the time and everything. And um, I'm a very sentimental person. And I remember my senior year, we had a few games get canceled due to snow. And I remember being so upset because I was like, it's my senior year. <laughs> and I didn't want it. I didn't want to um, the games to be canceled. And man, I didn't know I was going to cry. But um, yeah, the... Um, the games being canceled due to snow. I was like, no, I can still play. Like, no, everyone had to, everyone had to go home. So, um, yeah, whatever's on your schedule, you never know it's going to be rained out or snow snowed out or anything. So, yeah, yeah. You, you were lucky to play, you know, beyond that, which not a lot of girls, you know, are able to do that. Which is, you know, so you had a couple more games than you after that. So, uh, but I appreciate you sharing that, and um, you know, Lace, hopefully that is a good nugget for you to kind of take with you. Um, yeah, I mean, um, even Saturday, it was pouring in Fullerton, and we 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 played our first game. It was nice and sunny, no rain, and right when the second game's about to start, it starts pouring rain, yeah. and I'm in relief that game, so I, I'm, like, continuing to warm up, and it's, I'm, my face is drifting <laughs> wet with rain, and my catcher who's warming me up is like, Lacey, you can't warm up in this. I was like, no, no, no. Like, I, I'm just going to keep warming up. The game's supposed to start. And she's like, Lacey, I, like, I can't even see the ball. I'm like, oh, all right, fine. And so um, we stopped for a little bit and then we had a rain delay. But I just, I like wanted to go warm up again. And I, I just knew that right when the rain started, like we had to play a game. Like you can't, you can't just like, shut down and be like oh like rain rain is gonna affect me so that's um and then i ended up doing pretty well so i yeah. i think keeping that mindset just like going to warm up and just keep warming up and not really think about the rain and just keep yeah yeah, yeah. i couldn't i couldn't throw in rain to save my life until i was like i want to pitch in college i was like i want to be in i will figure it out <laughs> <laughs> so in college i figured out how to throw and i somehow got strikeouts in the rain so uh yeah i get you i get you <laughs> so it's and very I wanna, difficult yeah mm -hmm. so i want to end on that um so i wanted to bring up your uh your funny video or it wasn't funny i mean when you filled it that filled that ground ball and flipped it to your third basin for what year was that what how what year in college um, was it was either my sophomore and junior year. But what I noticed. Been... Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, it must have been my junior year, I think. Oh, yeah. So I, I saw I, I saw it on Facebook, right? And uh, Amanda Scarborough had your back because there were some that were really not so nice comments. I'm like, that was a great play. And people are still like, you know, making fun of you because they're, oh, she's probably not athletic or she, yeah. you know, she's not a fielding pitcher. And I'm like, no, that that's not, you guys don't know the game. It, it was a flapper. Mm -hmm. She was super fast. And you just, you know, it was, it was smart. It was like, how do you, how do you not give, you know, somebody credit for something like that? That was a great play, but some people are just haters out there for some reason. Thank you. Yeah. Shout out to Amanda. I uh, love her, but um, yeah, I just have that, like, it's part of having the softball IQ, like is you, people ask me all the time, like, did you practice that? I'm like, no. Like, you think that that's something that people think of? Like, no, the ball just took me that way. And I just, it just happened. Like, I don't know, just if you talk to any, you know, athlete that understands what I'm talking about, they'll know, oh, yeah, like, I can see that not being practiced. That's something that you just know to do. You have that, you know, wavelength with your teammate. And yeah. I had had her as my third baseman for a long time. And so she knows that, you know, going that way, you know, she's right there. And I was just looking at her. I said, hey, I'm tossing it to you. She goes, all right. And she just went for it. <laughs> well, the, the camera angle looked like you were, it was like a handoff. Like you were a quarterback handing it off to her. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, she just, she just continued coming towards yeah. me. And I just kind of did a, like a little toss. Yeah. 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 No, it was great. Cause if if you, if you plant your foot, right. And you pivot, she's safe by a mile. Right. Right. Uh, so exactly. That was a great play. Um, all right. Well, we're going to, uh, I know I you're going to. 
I was oh, going like kind of something along the lines of that with like being a pitcher and so close to the mound. Like there's certain plays that are just like, you know what? I just got the out. So it doesn't really matter how I feel that it or how it was, how it was done. Like, yeah. um, dad, I don't know if you, I think you saw this play. There's a, like a hard ground ball back at me. Yeah. And I literally like just threw my glove on the ground to block the ball. And then my glove fell off and I just like, didn't even think about picking it back up. I just went and got the ball and threw the girl out. Yeah. And, and my teammates were like, you didn't need your glove. I was like, why, why would I need no, to I put my glove like- back on? And then get the out like that doesn't make sense so yeah and that if you would have picked it up if you would have picked the ball up with your glove emily would have saw that and she would have been so mad at you <laughs> right yeah. you don't like people picking up the ball with the glove that is my ex <laughs> <laughs> pick it up with your hand right um all right so let the uh, so emily i know you have a podcast it's um rose metal so make sure you guys check that out. It's really cool. She just started up with a new co-host, right? With Jamie Gilbert. Yes. I, she was going to be my co-host. Yes. And, um, something happened and she is no longer able to be my co-host anymore. So I'm on uh, my own, but, um, I'll, I'm still planning on doing weekly episodes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was a great episode by the way. Cause she, that, what Thank a great you. story. Yeah. What a great story. Talk about, you know, identity crisis, you know, cause she was, you know, even though she had a baby, she still like identified as a softball player. And just, you know, so it's a great story. I, you guys need to check it out. Um, and then how could they get a hold of you? I know you said you, you started doing maybe some virtual lessons, like maybe for like, you know, hypothetically, Lacey was like, hey, you know, can you check me out? And then you would do like a virtual lesson with her. How, how's that work? And then how could they get a hold of you as far as contacting yeah. you? Yeah. First of all, thank you so much. Um, yeah, Rose metal is my like kind of side thing. I'm more focused on becoming that pitch. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to follow me on social media, um, you can look me up at at becoming that pitch. Um, and yeah, I, I just started doing online training and I'm really looking towards like working with college athletes that don't have a pitching coach type of thing. And there's a lot of them. Um, so yeah, if you wanted to sign up for training, it's just at becoming that pitch.com. You can sign up there, choose your, um, subscription plan. So if you wanted to do online training, if you wanted to get the, the video analysis once a month, sign up for the gold one. If you just want to have access to the guides and the workouts and the videos, um, just do the silver membership. And then after you subscribe, you can access the training through the app called coach IQ. So that's just where you log in. So you, in order to sign up, you have to sign up on a browser and, you know, choose the subscription. And then once you get access, you can log in through that app. Um, you will have access to my programs and you can message me. And um, yeah. Very cool. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you for being on, Emily. I appreciate it. Uh, Lacey, you have any parting words or? Um, thank you for the advice the knowledge the memory so i'm um, excited to hear all the great things about this episode yeah awesome. yeah thank, thank you, you so much it's so fun i i love this so thank you yeah you're welcome all right take care everybody we'll see you on the other side lisa love you love you emily take care thank you bye